you know that if you sold your soul to the devil, you can have instant fame like that tomorrow. And when he said that, it was like something enveloped me, a presence. It was the Holy Spirit, right? That just like almost like, no, this is mine. Don't touch my anointed. And like how, you know, the Bible tells us to meditate on the word day and night. Mm -hmm. What do people meditate on mostly? Music. Music. What's up, people? I'm Stefan Cheney, and I am sitting here with... Christina Cheney, your lovely wife. Who's my... Uh, you let me say that. Of almost eight years. Almost eight years. On Wednesday. Honestly, in two hours. Okay. And we're here because um, we've been through a lot in the past eight years, and even prior to marriage. We both had very transformational experiences in life, which led us to where we are now, mm-hmm. which is um, we're both believers in Christ. Um, we lead in ministry together, hence Activate Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And um, you posted something recently that has just gone crazy online, um, on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about that post. What's crazy is that was Activate Wednesday. Activate Wednesdays is our is our weekly meetings, our weekly church gathering that we just launched here in Atlanta. And right before that, I don't even know what possessed me to like, I guess I was thinking about that, that time and I was like, I just instinctively pulled out my phone and just like, like I was thinking out loud. Mm. Like I remember the time when I was like, I'm thinking about this, let me just do a video. So that's kind of how what started it. So you know you got to be careful using words like possessed with people that take things very literally. When you're surrendered to the Lord and the Holy Spirit, he really does lead you to do things, even in your subconscious, I believe. So that's what led me to post it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think anything of it because I post videos weekly, inspirational messages, scripture, just things that I think about, things I've overcome that I know could help other people. And so that's what my approach was in documenting or, or just sharing this quick little one minute, 20 second video. So for those that have not seen it, uh, go to her Instagram page at Christina underscore Cheney. But just to kind of sum it up, you talked about being in the studio and you were working with a renowned producer who mm-hmm. we will not name. Mm-hmm. And because that was something people were, were asking too, who's the producer? Yeah, just like people that just let nosy, us know man. so we can be on the lookout. No, yeah. like listen, just because I don't know if he turned his life over to God. I don't right. know, so right. why am I gonna? No, he asked you to step out, and you all were walking. Yeah, throughout he, the studio, and what happened? He asked me. He asked me, "Let's go for a walk." I had been working with him for a few months, mm-hmm. so it wasn't like a the first time. Right. And we walked around the studio. It was in Miami, Florida. And the studio was in the basement or ground level of a hotel that was being renovated. Mm -hmm. So we were walking around the renovation site. And I don't remember the conversation leading up to it, but he just casually, like in conversation, it wasn't like a, let's do a ritual now. No, it was just in casual conversation. And so I trust this man because he's worked with a lot of people when he said, it was like immediate. You know that if you sold your soul to the devil, you can have instant fame like that tomorrow. And when he said that, it was like something enveloped me, a presence. It was the Holy Spirit, right? That just like, almost like, no, this is mine. Don't touch my anointed type of thing because clearly we were I wasn't walking with the Lord so there was demonic presence demonic influences around us absolutely but it was almost like the enemy was trying to see if what would I do it was almost like that try her Job when that happened I felt the fear of the Lord goosebumps all that and I could not stand I fell on my knees and started to Ask God to forgive me. Forgive me for lying. Forgive me, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, Lord, I'm yours. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And crying. I don't even remember what else I was saying, but just crying. I don't know how long I was on, on my knees. And this man has never seen me in such a vulnerable state before. And I, I'm, I'm crying. And then I realize, oh, my God, I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. not alone. And I look up. Right, and he's sitting on, I guess it was like a chair or a couch there mm-hmm. with his head and hands like this bowed like that. 
And I don't know what happened. I don't remember the dialogue after that, but we left. I think I finished the session, still worked with him after that, um, repented, but then went back to, well, okay, I just have to be careful with the industry. I just got to make sure that I don't show too much of this and I don't say the wrong things and make sure that I'm still kind of clean, but yet still edgy. But in that world, you're not in control. If you're not like in alignment with the Lord, you're not in control. I was not in control of my hair color, of how to talk. Certain lyrics had to be switched a little bit to make it a little bit more edgy, make it a little bit more, you know, like mainstream, mainstream or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, it was like a snowball of more control over me. And I didn't realize how much of an influence that time of my life impacted me in everything i i go through through the comments Mm -hmm. um you know it's advised to not do that if you're the one posting because you'll get wrapped up in everybody's opinions Mm -hmm. um but you posted it and you know how i am over you i wanted to see what people were saying and so i scroll through the comments and at this point it was i don't know 1500 comments or so so i'm just scrolling through and the majority of the comments were you know very positive Uh, but then there were a few that were just trolling, so I don't pay attention to them. But then there were some that had like legitimate questions. They were wondering, what is it? What does it look like when someone sells their soul to the devil? First off, people were saying that um, what she's saying is not true. What she's saying is not. You can't sell your soul because God owns your soul. First off, somebody was asking her or telling her, you know, that if you do this, if you sell your soul to the devil, you can be famous tomorrow. It wasn't something that she's saying is something that she did, right? It's something that was offered to her. People were really hung up on on what it looks like if someone were to do that. Mm-hmm. And so for the people that aren't in their word, right, that, that yeah. need practical understanding of what it looks like when you're faced with a choice to serve God or serve the enemy, the kingdom of darkness, mm-hmm. break that down a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, in Matthew, it says For people that, that don't know the Bible. Okay, people who don't know the Bible. The Bible says that you cannot serve two masters. And it's very popular to say you can't serve God and money. But it before that, it proceeds with you cannot serve two masters, whether you are aware or not. And meaning our we were created to follow God. We were created to be in covenant with God. We fell. We are born into sin. So it's either God or the world. And the world is currently the enemy's domain. He's a prince in power, the ruler of the air. He's behind all the influences we see. Every single evil thing on the face of the earth from a lie, girl, you look good, she don't, to the most sinister thing. That is the enemy on full display. So with that being said, you cannot serve two masters. You're either walking with God, serving God, being sold out for Christ, or you're a person of the world. And I'm reminded of the time where um, Peter rebukes Jesus before going to the cross. Jesus knew he was going to go to the cross and he shared it with his disciples. But Peter was the one that said, no, never, never, Lord, not, you're not going to go. And Jesus told him, get behind me, Satan. You don't have the Lord's affair in your heart. You're about man's affairs. I'm paraphrasing. But basically, it's either God or the enemy point blank. There's no in between. There's no, well, you know, I don't, I don't do the evil thing. I don't do Satan, but I don't do God either. So I'm in the middle. If you don't do God, you are in covenant with the enemy, knowingly or unknowingly. And he uses the music industry to influence us. So selling your soul, right? What would that look like? I don't know. I think it can look like a bunch of different things. I think the occultists do rituals And I think there's actual things before our eyes that may look like, oh, I'm just signing a contract, but you know that you don't agree with the things that they're saying. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're compromising with your morals. You feel like you're not really comfortable with it. You're signing something. Mm -hmm. You're giving over ownership to those things, Mm -hmm. to someone else. Anytime you are compromising or forsaking your moral code, you're giving ownership because we have the freedom to choose for someone who doesn't know anything about the spirit realm it could be if it was that casually said to someone and i don't think it's that casually said to every single person Mm -hmm. 
I think just over time, oh, you do this, you get this money. Oh, do this contract and you get this and make sure you do that. Make sure, don't say that. Don't talk to this person. Make sure you show this leg or make sure you do a little oopsie. And you're doing this for what? For fame and money? Mm -hmm. To be glorified? Why? Why do you want to be glorified? Why do you want fame? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so like that thing, fame was never for us. We were never supposed to be famous. The mm -hmm. enemy wanted to be famous. He thought of himself higher than God. And God said, oh, you cherub, how iniquity was found in you. And fame is one way the enemy glorifies himself. Um, I, in another part of the Bible, when Jesus first went into his ministry and he was baptized and he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, mm -hmm. one of the things that Satan did was he said, if you bow to me, I'll give you all of this, mm -hmm. right? And he pointed to like the kingdoms of the world. That's another way people can get ownership of something to the enemy in exchange for what's being presented. Mm -hmm. I just want to make that very clear to people that people aren't out here saying, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to just say, hey, here's my soul. Hey, you can have it. I'm going to sell my soul. But whenever you compromise on who you are, Whenever you decide, yeah, I know it's not cool for me to, um, you know, talk down on women a certain way, but if this it sells, if it sells records, I'm going to do it. The things that you're coming into agreement with, whether you think is, you know, casual or just a song, these things are living in people's minds. Mm -hmm. And like how, you know, the Bible tells us to meditate on the word day and night. Mm -hmm. What do people meditate on mostly? Music. Music. And if you're the one creating that in exchange for money, fame, notoriety, whatever it is, you're exchanging your soul. Yeah, your soul. Because what makes up the soul? Mm -hmm. Your thoughts, your emotions. When you're in darkness, you are blind. Some people know, but most people don't. There, It's like that ignorance is bliss thing. No, it's not. Ignorance is dumb. And it's it's dangerous. And just like the Bible says that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if you're chasing fame, if you're chasing money, you're going to do whatever it is to get those things. But we're never, we're supposed to be pursuing God. Right. We're supposed to be chasing after God, um, uncovering the mysteries of God and revealing it to the world. But music is so powerful. Like I remember a time where, and... I still wanted to do music. I wanted to write, okay, I may like write romance songs and not curse and make sure just, you know, kind of teeter tattering, like straddling the fence. But it wasn't, it still was not sold out for Christ. Mm -hmm. It was still, I was in the battle zone. I remember writing in the booth because they were doing cocaine and stuff in the main room. So I went in the booth to just write. And I, I found myself almost being enticed to write kind of like blasphemous lyrics. Mm -hmm. Like a song that I wrote with him that was out. You could probably find the video on Vimeo. But I remember saying something like sinless love and just encouraging, basically encouraging like premarital sex and things like that. Like, oh, it's okay because it's, it's love. But I, I remember writing and feeling pres a presence in, in the studio, in the booth mm -hmm. while I'm writing and I'm trying to shake it off. But it gets stronger and stronger, and it's so, f it's like a f fear. And it was so, like, it was that vibration thing. I, like, I felt, I felt it, and it was so uncomfortable. And I was also, like, not walking with God. I was kind of ignoring God because I wanted to, I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be a huge star because I knew I had it in me. I had every single tool lined up for that to happen. Mm -hmm. But... I was very uncomfortable inside. Like I knew there was, you know, demonic spirits all around, but I was just trying to like, so I didn't even write, I don't even think I completed that song. Mm. But um, I have a, I have a video where I shared my encounter with the, with the enemy. So you could look it up on my YouTube channel because it's too, too much to go into here. But after that encounter, which happened maybe like a, a year and a half after that initial hey, you know, people in the industry sell their souls. Like That encounter happened? Maybe like a year after, a year and change after. Because I was still like, okay, maybe I can be safe, but yet be a little here, 
And don't get it twisted. We're not saying that everybody that does secular music has At sold all. their There's soul. There's so to many the devil, amazing songs right? that are not about God. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. you know, I don't want people to think that we're just. You know, That's not the case. No, yeah. but for the most part, mainstream. Li- just listen to the lyrics. Yeah. What are the lyrics saying? Right. What are they promoting? That's right. a given. And then another thing, what people will, where the enemy will masquerade as, oh, I'm honoring my ancestors, or I'm honoring the universe. Or the vibrations and the power. No, no, no. If you're not honoring God, if you're not lighting up the kingdom of heaven, you're not doing anything but giving the enemy more ammunition on this earth to rule and reign right. in people's minds. And let people think that there is an alternative power that they that's that they not can demonic. grab on. And right. of course, people have supernatural experiences all the time in their quiet places. You're entertaining demons and devils unclean spirits. There's so many people that want to experience the supernatural. They're going into these great lengths or going to different countries, drinking these drugs, trying to open up themselves to spirits that are not good. They're not good. They're right. unclean spirits. We are spirit beings, but we cannot operate in the spirit illegally without the Holy Spirit who covers us and protects us and gives us all discernment. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit reveals all things to us. But the enemy is, he's cunning and he shows up as an angel of light. So a lot of people will say they've seen their loved ones or they've heard beautiful songs or crazy things, seen beautiful things. If the way you did it to get there will tell you another thing. Like, right. that's not of God. Right. That's deception all day long. If it's not talking about Jesus, it's not it. So speaking of deception, because another thing that came up during your um, viral video which I think now has over like 400,000 views. It's crazy. Yeah. There is someone or a couple of people that were questioning the cover photo because you were, oh, yeah. you had your like fingers forming like a triangle no, that was, it was over a your eye or it, wasn't a it was the Illuminati symbol according to them. Like, why did you choose that photo? What does that photo mean? And can you clear up um, yeah. whether or not you were in the Illuminati or still are? <laughs> I've never been nor have I ever will be a part of the Illuminati. Is that even real or is that something? I think so. Okay. I absolutely think so. Okay. If you have the Holy Spirit, he reveals all things. The cover IG created on the reels, Zoom, like took half my face. I was like, I felt led to leave it Hmm. because if you're saved, you're saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. But for those who are lost, and feel like if they maybe have gone down a dark hole and they feel like there's no hope for them and they can't turn to anything, you can absolutely turn to Jesus. Right. He has hel- the keys of hell, death, and the grave in his hand. So this video, amen, will encourage those who believe, but for those who don't believe and feel like they're stuck, there's a way out. And that way is Jesus. He will cancel all of those assignments that are ready to create like a, like a blackmail or something like that that have lined up, if you leave us now, we'll do this. God will take care of it, mm-hmm. especially when it's forces of darkness. I'm not talking about things you got to work out. You sow seeds, you got to work out some of that stuff. But things that are clearly demonic influence strongholds, God will sever that immediately. Mm-hmm. He will. And so there's no fear or condemnation in the Lord. So that is for those people who feel, and they'll then they'll click on it. The witches and warlocks will click on it. And I pray to God that they hear about Jesus and that they're set free. What do you have to say to the people that think you're lying? Because that was a thing too. Ah, she's lying. Ah, this mm-hmm. is all cap. Um, I, don't, like, I don't care. That's not for you then. Fair enough. <laughs> when you had this encounter, were you already saved or did you become saved after the fact? So I, I grew up in church. Salvation is a walk. It's a day-to-day sacrifice, a day-to-day. You're being saved daily. You're being saved from your sins and all that kind of stuff every single day. But there is a, a, a spirit realm that's very active. And I can remember, you know, watching MTV, BET, young, like young, 13, and being influenced by, oh, man, that looks cool. Like, wow, people on TV doing this and having this amazing life. So I think that's where the seed was sown to want to pursue fame and be on TV. Why do you want to be on TV? Why do you want to be on TV? Why, why do you want follow? You know what I mean? Why do you want followers so bad? Mm-hmm. I didn't, I never asked myself that question. It's just a fleshly carnal desire because your flesh wants to be exalted, your flesh wants to be glorified, but you're not, you're not meant to carry it, which is why so many people 
have crazy breakdowns. We mm -hmm. see it a lot. Tell us, I know this, but tell them what life has been like since that moment. Because I, I did see someone say, so what now? Like you turn away from music, like you just give up on the fame and the success and you just choose to live mm -hmm. a life of, you know, just being raggedy and not pursuing your dream. Mm -hmm. So what's life li been like since? Well, I didn't turn away from music. I did go through a period of intense development by getting married and having children, sang in the worship team in my church in LA that I love so much, still write music to this day, haven't recorded in a while, but it's still a desire. And I think that's all the more amazing how God will get the glory when my music does resume, giving God glory and just singing worship songs, songs from my heart, the glory that will come from that for God, not for me, but for God, the testimony of how it's been 10 years or, or 11 years since I've been active. But I did that. So now I'm trusting God with my life and he has to do an internal work in me first before he can send me out. And that's, and that's, that's Bible. Mm. But like, I met you, I met, God gave me amazing friends who I'm still friends with now, who pray with me and encourage me. And like, I have three, we have three beautiful boys and God has been providing our every need and then some. Mm -hmm. And now we have a church here in Atlanta that we've just launched and like increase after increase as we continue to humble ourselves before God, he will have his way. And so this life is far more better than, and I've partied, I've, I've been at the table I've been in the bedrooms. That's probably a bad phrase. It's not like saying like sexual, but just like in the inner rooms with some of the world's most famous people. I've been in the inter inner inner courts with these people. And even then was like, something's just not right. This can't be it. Is This is it? This is what people would die for? Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I pray like when I, when music, when God does allow me to do music and write songs and produce music, that it will really impart his spirit into every ear and undo chains of depression and suicide and inferiority, all that kind of stuff. Amen. It sounds like just to sum up what you've said, you didn't miss out on anything. No. Um, you've been fulfilled, mm -hmm. even though you haven't been in the limelight, you haven't been touring on world tours and center stage and in front of the camera in that regard, mm -hmm. but the piece that you have is, is full. You have love, you have a family, you have kids that love you, you have me, a husband that loves you, you have a flock that you're pouring into spiritually, women that you lead and counsel, and I think that's important for people to know because they think that the pursuit of fame will fill the void. Will provide that level of fulfillment and peace. And if I heard you correctly, you found peace and fulfillment in not pursuing fame, but pursuing, pursuing Jesus. Yeah. Amen.